All right, so day five. Let's just jump in, okay? So jump in with me. Um, if you haven't read it, it's about clarity of thought. And um, do you ever feel confused? Like, do you ever go through the day doing all of your activities and you're like, I don't need, it, it's almost just like a, a jumbled mess. It's just, it just is. It's one of those days, like how you drive somewhere and then you don't know how you got there. Um, you know, I, I have this thing with brain fog that I feel that way sometimes that I'm just like, it's like somebody asks you a question and you're just like, huh? But you know the answer and you know what they asked, but you just can't kind of make it get from here to here or actions or whatever. So I want to talk to you about clarity of thought and how, especially if you're going through a fast, you can start having that brain fog and, and that brain fog is, um, sometimes it's a physical brain fog. And when you have sugar um, withdrawals and things like that, you can actually have brain fog from detox. But tonight, we're going to talk about a spiritual brain fog. Just a confusion, a cloudiness. Um, you know, have you ever just not felt like your thoughts are very clear? Or that you're double-minded, so to speak. Or you're um, easily confused. You can't make up your mind. You're indecisive. I just don't know what to do. I'm just trying, but I don't know what to do. It's like you're walking through the motions without a full thought process of this is what I'm going to do. This is my, uh, this is what I want to accomplish, right? So uh, let's talk today about um, Isaiah 26, 3 is our scripture for today for us to think about. And it is, you will keep in perfect peace the mind that is dependent on you for it is trusting in you and you being the Lord, obviously. But when I was reading this, and, and, and we've, we've read that or it being set on you, we've read that scripture before. I want to read this out of the message. I, I don't really go to the message often, but I just really felt prompted to go to the message. And um, this was, uh, I really like the way this said it. People with their mindset on you will keep completely whole. Wow. Steady on their feet because they keep it, keep at it and don't quit. Depend on God and keep at it because the Lord God you have is a sure thing. And that right there was just so, um, sorry, my, I am like having all kinds of technical difficulties. I know my camera just jumped all around. <laughs> Let me see if I can fix that a little bit so it doesn't happen to you guys again. Sorry. But, um, so that, that's basically exactly what we're talking about. So it is saying people with their mindset on you are completely whole. We are completely whole when we are focused on him. So if you're going through the daily functions, whether it be in a mom or a wife or an employee or whatever, or, you know, all of the things that you are, all of the hats that you wear, and you're going through these things and you just don't really have a clear direction or you just feel like it's mundane and it's just going and going and going. I can tell you that you are not just created to, to work and pay bills and die. You are created with a purpose and the enemy wants to kind of cloud our thinking so we can't make good choices, but also because we are distracted. Um, when we don't have a clear vision and we don't know where we're going. Does that make sense to anybody? So that that's what the Bible says. You know, people perish for lack of vision. And we're not talking about like an overall vision. But clarity of mind is literally a tiny vision for each hour, minute, you know, day. So like if you're just functioning through life, thank you for, for giving me a heart so I, I know what's going on. I know you guys are picking up when I'm laying down because sometimes I'm not clear myself. But I know what I'm trying to say here in the sense of, you know, everyday life just happens. And sometimes we step back and we're like, how, how did we even get here? How did this even happen? You know, or whatever. And then, or how is it 10 years later and we've been doing the same thing? Um, I think that's one of the, the tools of the enemy is to get us in just this mundane ritual or, or repetition without actually a thought process. And then sometimes when we stop and we're like, we need to think about this. Our mind goes in a thousand different directions. Are you like me? When I go to when I go to lay down, I like automatically start analyzing everything from fifth grade conversations to an hour ago. What do I need to get for the boys tomorrow? What happened at church this morning? I mean, like everything, my mind just starts going. I do not know why. 
the lighting is surging. <laughs> But it's in the app because it's not here at the house. But anyways, so the enemy is just like on the move big time with our brain. And we just can't. And then we're like, we just can't focus. We just can't focus. And then, and I'm not, do not hear me in a negative way when I say this. Sometimes we're quick to medicate things that are actually spiritual problems. And so I believe in ADD and ADHD. I believe it's true. But I also believe that there is a spiritual battle that goes on for our attention and our focus. And our mind cannot stay clear if we do not focus on God. And what does that mean? Because I remember reading scriptures or hearing people say that when I was first, when I just kind of first started with my walk. And it's like, so you want me to walk around focused on God 24-7 all day long? I would get nothing done. That's That was like, what does that even mean? How is that even practical or applicable? But that's not what he's talking about. He's saying, focus on me and everything. Like, take me with you. It's okay to ask God, Lord, what do you want? Lunch? You know, or, or all of the, the individual little things in life, the, the just everyday stuff. Take him with you. Stop and ask when you're confused, when you're aggravated, when you're frustrated. You know, stop and ask him. Help me with this, please. I don't know what to do. And I don't care if it's even, I don't know what to wear to church today. Because I'm telling you, I pray about my clothes all the time. I ain't even lying. I'm not a clothing connoisseur type person. And so, clothes dress is not like, oh yeah, I can't wait to wear this outfit. That ain't me, girl. That ain't me. So, I'm like, God, what do you want me to wear today? Because it's stressing me out. I don't know. I'm confused. Take him in the everyday places of your life. So we read Isaiah 26, sorry, but the message, I just love that, that it says, people with their mindset on you will keep completely whole. So we will be whole in him when our minds are set on him. Steady on our feet. Oh, I love that. Not shaky, you know, steady, that we're not going to tump over when the next little thing comes at us. Because they keep at it and they don't quit. Depend on God and keep at it because it in the Lord, in the Lord God, you have a sure thing. So that's what the Bible says in Isaiah 26 story is to keep at it. You have a sure thing. You are trusted in him. Then your feet are on steady ground. There, there are a few other things that can keep your focus. Habits, um, situations, relationships. We already talked about kind of the food that you eat can do that, but I don't really want to talk about the physical side, because there are or there are side effects of vitamin deficiencies and poor uh, food choices that actually cloud our mind. But today, I'm going to talk to you about spiritual things that cloud your mind. And and me, a lot of times when we get into relationships, and I'm talking about even friendships, um, we get into these friendships and relationships, and we don't we don't really equate how our behavior has started changing since we've been around these people or. When someone is trying to take, take, take from you and your mind is like everywhere or when you have taken on more than you are supposed to have and you're you're literally running in a hundred different directions at one time. Those things is when he says to keep our mind on him and we will be in perfect peace. That is when every one of our choices we ask God about. God is this, and I know that sounds petty and crazy, but it's only prideful to think that you don't have to ask God who you should be in relationship with. And I even mean your friendship. I mean working, uh, businesses. You know, we used to pray that, like, God, we don't want to be in business with anybody that you don't want us in business with. Because it's not just that they're these evil people that are going to lead you astray, but that if you're in relationship with things and people that you're not supposed to be in, then it starts to rob from you energy and effort and time and thought. And I only have so much space up here. Oh, Lord, I just realized how bad my hair was. I only realize, you know, I only have a little bit up there. Yes, yes, April, that is so good. That's right. Stop and think about it. Every decision, it takes like a quarter of a second to stop and ask God about that. I'm telling y'all, I ask God about what to eat. I, not all the time. I'm not telling you I'm perfect because I'm not. I really don't know that he would say, yes, eat that little Debbie cake. But I ask God about what am I supposed to wear? Where am I supposed to go? In the morning time, I have tried to get in the habit of asking God, Lord, what do you want me to do today? How do you want me to, to do this? Or how does my schedule need to look? 
or whatever. I ask him in the morning. I try to ask before I even get up. Because it's so easy for my thoughts and my understanding to start clouding out my thought processes. And I'm just, the next thing I know, I'm just either going through the motions mindlessly and not getting anything done or not being productive like I would like to get productive. Or I'm going through, you know, like going through the day going, I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing. And then the next thing you know, it's 3 o'clock or 5 o'clock or whatever. And you're just like, I've wasted a whole day. And guys, time is so limited it is so fragile it is so special you know i just i'm like i don't want to waste another minute and i think that's one of the ways the enemy kind of just keeps us off course and not really effective for the kingdom is because our thought processes aren't effective for the kingdom they're not laid out with him so everything jumps in the way uh, Olivia likes to pick on me because she's like, you're, you're ADD. You go to clean one room and you stopped and you picked up something in this room and you, then you put that back to the next room and you never come back to the first thing. Anybody else clean like that? I think that's a mom thing to be honest, but our thoughts are like that. If we're not really taking our thoughts captive and the Bible says, take your thoughts captive. You know, I, I pray that all the time because if I don't, my mind will wander and my mind typically wanders when it's left unattended. When when I don't keep it in check with the Holy Spirit, my mind wanders to things that it shouldn't wander to. It, a lot of times it wanders to negativity of, oh, I know they're, they're talking bad about me. Or, I can't believe she did that to me. Or, man, Rachel, I can't believe you said that yesterday. You're so stupid. And it goes back to thought processes that I'm trying to die to. So, keep part of dying to my flesh, which like I said, is also part of, um, fasting and praying and opening this 21 days. I have no clue why this is doing this with the light. Sorry, but it's messing me up with my ADD, but we're going into this new year with, with, um, prayer and fasting and focusing on the Lord. Then it's time right now. It's day five and, and maybe you're, you haven't started your fast yet. I know that some of you guys haven't, you start tomorrow. Um, and I want you to go back and revisit these or either watch them, you know, later on. But there's a place where you're like, hey, I'm getting my, I'm getting my thoughts under control. Like I'm going to have a clear mind because the Lord says I'm supposed to have a clear mind. And so when I want you to meditate on Isaiah 26, 3, it says, well, you will keep in perfect peace the mind that is dependent on you being God for it is trusting in God and then Psalms 119, 130, I like this one. The unfolding of your words, your, your, it's a capital your, it's, it's God. The unfolding of your words gives light. It gives understanding to people. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I'm simple minded, okay? I am simple. I'm just a girl trying to make it in this world. I am trying to be the best mom, the best employee or the best whatever I can be I'm just trying to do it right and I think that the most of us try to do the right thing and we find ourselves so bogged down in confusion and distraction and our thoughts are not clear anymore and then once we're there we're like how do we get out how do we get out of this mess and it's to turn back to the word it's to turn back to God he's holy and he's righteous and he has something for each of us and our little mundane things matter like our little days and you know me being at home oh it keeps going out oh no I'm sorry thank you April for letting me know that I tried maybe on the upload it'll fix um All right, I'm back on there. Do you see me now, April? Sorry, guys. I don't know why I have a low connection because I'm on my internet at the house. So, go figure. But I'm not sure where you caught off, where, where you picked up or caught off. And I will tell you this while we're in the middle of a technical difficulty. I'm going to do some uh, videos, recorded videos that are not live for the YouTube. So, okay, awesome. I got a heart up. So, um, as long as, um, if you want to go back on the YouTube and review those things, then I, it'll be, you know, more of a um, kind of not live thing. Okay, so yes, you're back on. Okay, great. Awesome.
Okay, so, but what we're saying is, is our mind is, um, when it's confused, and the just calm, even now, there is distraction after distraction. It was hard for me, me to even get in here tonight because I was just like, I have a hundred things to do to get ready for the kids for school tomorrow, get everybody ready, you know, just all the stuff that you do, the mom stuff, the kids, the everything, but I have to stop in the middle of all that and pray. And I had to ask God for clarity because I don't want confusion. And the Bible says that mother of confusion. And so if I find myself confused and frustrated and worn out and, and um, distracted, I stop and say, okay, God, I need you to clear my thoughts. I need you to pull me back in line. I need you to show me what I'm doing. I Y'all, I ain't even playing. Like I have walked in the kitchen going, I don't even know why I'm here. God, why am I here? How real it is and then when you sit down to try to read your Bible or to focus and you're so you know just out there it's like my mind's in a hundred different places I have no clarity of thought we can call on these scriptures and we can pray for it I love that that Psalms 119 says the unfolding of your words gives light when we are dark and we are that's funny because the lights are going crazy. When we are dark and it, we are confused, we're like in a darkness. It's like literally like a veil over us. We're like in a fog. And so when it says the unfolding of your words gives light, it gives understanding. Simple. Even the simple things matter. So we're able to go to his word. We're able to stop and pray. And I want to encourage you that right now during your fast is you may find yourself distracted in a lot of different ways. The enemy does not like when we give up something for the Lord and when we seek him to get closer to him. And not to mention your body and your brain, your mind isn't used to being committed to him on this level. And so you're having to call yourself into check as well as fight through some battles, you know, because you're getting stronger in the Lord. You're getting closer to Jesus every day that you submit to him. Whether you're fasting or not, when you commit to a lifestyle of prayer and reading your word, you're being stronger, you know, in that, and you're also being drawn closer to Him, and that is the most beautiful thing that you could even possibly imagine, right? So I want you to focus on those two scriptures. I just want to pray for us. I feel like there is definitely a lot of attack on this um, to do this video, and um, it's just kind of been crazy and if you've had a crazy day or whatever you know shit I haven't had a crazy day my birthday so I had lots of positive um conversations and good sweet you know words and stuff we don't do a lot for birthdays but I did get an iPad for Christmas so it kind of doubled as my birthday <laughs> so but anyways um I'm just gonna pray that we have clarity of thought in our mind are subdued by the word and not our emotions not our situations not our habits not um, the opinions of others there's so many things that mess up our thinking and so I'm just praying right now so let, let's just go into that because I, 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 I was just gonna say I've been actually this is that we will have clarity of thought that God will start showing us the relationships or the situations the habits the people the, the voices that are just clouding out our mind and it's just all too much. And so that he will show that to us so that we can personally take a stand, uh, clear those things out, put them in their proper place, but also that we can pray that God will help us and show us what to do in that. So I'm going to pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you right now, God. I thank you, Father, for being with us on this live. I thank you, Father, for each person that's here and under my voice, God. Lord, I ask right now, God, that you be tangible, that you clear our thoughts, Lord, that you help us streamline and focus on you. And God, I thank you that there is peace in you. I thank you, Father, that when our mind is set on you, that, that our thoughts are clear, that our direction is very clear, God. I thank you, Lord, for always being faithful and holy. And God, I lift up every single person that, that can hear me right now, God. And I ask, Lord, that you touch their, their bodies and their minds. God, that they go into 2020 as everyone else is preaching about clear vision. I, I just speak that over their minds. Clear thought. Clarity of, of um, direction. Just very, that they would really know where they're going and why they're going that way. 
God, I just thank you, Father, that you never leave us or forsake us. God, I thank you for plans that are great and holy and good. And God, I ask, Lord, that you show us those ways, God, that we want more of you. Lord, I praise your holy name, and I thank you for this opportunity. In your name we pray, amen. All right, guys, so that's it. I, I said I'm going to keep it between 15 and 30 minutes. Um, this is kind of one of those things that you just really have to kind of work out with the Lord. Like I said, I'm going to be putting these up on the YouTube, but there'll be more um, actual videos that are recorded. And so it'll take me a few days to get those finished and get up there. But anyways, I love you. I hope you're having a wonderful time. I'm enjoying my prayer and fasting time. Um, it's day five and uh, I'm just really, I'm just enjoying being closer with the Lord. It's such a precious thing. It's like going home for the holidays. I don't know how to explain it. It's like going to mama's house or something, you know, and you just get that hug. You go to see your grandma. And I'm, I'm hoping and praying that this year, that 2020 will bring us all closer to the Lord on a on a regular basis, not just um, when we fast, but that we will pick up a lifestyle of prayer and fasting on a continual basis. So, I love you guys. I hope you have a wonderful week. Praying for the teachers and the students that are going back and are getting back ready and all that good stuff. So, I hope you have a great night. Talk with you later. Bye.